Hello, and thanks for your interest in using and mastering Cookie Cutter, a fantastic tool for creating templates of all sorts of projects. Let's start by talking about what is Cookie Cutter. So we can create a template or grab some template off the internet that represents the inputs that we can use to generate some really interesting project. Maybe it's a web application set up with the framework that you like and the ORM that you like and all the various integrations that you might need. We're going to take this and feed it to the cookie cutter engine. Now, these templates can be in all sorts of languages. It could be Python. It could be C++. It could be C Sharp. It doesn't matter. Cookie cutter works against a whole variety of different types of technologies. It's going to ask the user who's creating this project a couple of questions like what's the project name, how do you want to deploy it, and so on. It's going to take that information and combine it with the template and generate a shiny new project that you can use. So Cookie Cutter was created by Audrey Roy Greenfield back in 2013. You might know Audrey from The Two Scoops of Django. It's a pretty famous book about Django. She was one of the co-authors. So why and when would you use Cookie Cutter? Well, I think of two general use cases. On one hand, I might just be a user and I want to create a project. So I might be able to more easily create complex projects. This would make my process of creating projects more reliable, and it's faster onboarding for new users who have to create projects from some complicated thing. If there's a cookie cutter template, you can just say run this one command and boom, you have a shiny new project ready to go. On the other hand, you might wanna create cookie cutter templates. And we focus a lot on that in this course. Here, you would be able to possibly increase adoption of your project. It's easier to get started. It's more obvious how to get started. You could reduce support costs or support effort because you no longer have to help users get started. You just say, run this one command. Boom, you're started. <laughs> now let's talk about how we use our project. You can help those users fall into the pit of success by structuring everything just the right way. So as long as they just keep going with the momentum you set up, they're going to be doing things the right way you can even gain exposure for your project. So if you're doing something out in public, you could have your cookie cutter template listed in the cookie cutter documentation, and that would help others discover what you've created and built. Finally, it provides consistency across your organization. If you're using cookie cutter for internal projects, then this provides a way for all the projects that get created inside your company or inside your team to be done in a similar way because it's always done with the same template. So, to talk about what we're going to learn in this course, think of it in three sections. The consumers of Cookie Cutter, the Cookie Cutter as project lead, and then maybe you even want to modify or contribute back to Cookie Cutter. So as a consumer, we'll talk about prereqs and setup, installing Cookie Cutter, learning the command line interface, surveying the existing pantry full of Cookie Cutters. That's the documentation section that actually lists all the existing templates. Talk about local versus remote templates, profile defaults, virtual environments, replaying project creation for when you're either creating a project or for continuous integration, whole variety of things there. If you are a project lead or you run an open source project, you could create a template for your project or for your company. We'll talk about how do you go and create a project, what's the project structure and naming look like, how do you prompt the user, what are our options there, things like choice prompts and default values and so on we'll see that one of the most powerful parts of Cookie Cutter are its pre and post generation hooks. Here you can write arbitrary code to customize and transform your project creation as part of your Cookie Cutter template. We'll see how to exclude files from transformations. So if you wanna ship a Cookie Cutter template inside a Cookie Cutter template, that turns out to be a problem. We'll talk about how to fix it, conditionally including or excluding files. We'll do a case study of three major projects and how they're using Cookie Cutter. And we'll even talk about how to get the template that you've created added to that pantry full of cookie cutters. Finally, we'll talk about programmatic cookie cutter. So cookie cutter both is a CLI and an API. So if you want to make any sort of application you want, a command line interface, a GUI, a web app, whatever that generates these projects, then you can wrap up cookie cutter and leverage cookie cutter to do all the internal work, but you can provide a nice facade on top of it. Finally, if you want to contribute to cookie cutter or modify it and make some changes, we'll talk about building it locally and setting it up so you can run and test it. The contributor guidelines, we'll talk about how to add a new feature, how to go through the whole pull request process. And as part of this course, we will actually add a new feature or fix some sort of bug in cookie cutter and go through the whole process of get it submitted and accepted back into cookie cutter the project i hope you're looking forward to learn more about cookie cutter i'm michael kennedy i wrote this course for you and i think there's a ton to learn and cookie cutter is a great tool you should definitely check it out hope you join my course today thank you